Hey folks, today I'm going to talk about chapter three of my book, Strategic Money Planning, Eight Ways to Get Your Financial House in Order. In this chapter, we cover the great schools trap, what I call the great schools trap. And what I mean by that is how many people fall under the concept that they have to get their kids in the great schools and that they'll pay a hefty premium in order to get their kids in the great schools. And my concern on this and why I want to advise you to be aware of the grade schools trap is because how is a school evaluated to be great? Do you know? Well, we'll use the greatschools.org website and let's go over that right now because I think it's pretty interesting. And, and this is not a slight on greatschools.org. I think it's, it's helpful for sure. But here's a greatschools.org website. And you can just type in the name of your school. And I'm going to type in the high school I went to, Mont, Mont, Gump, Mont, Montgomery Blair in Silver Spring, Maryland. So I went to Montgomery Blair High School in Silver Spring, Maryland, graduated in 1988. And let's see what this says here. Um, it gives my school a, a six. Yeah, let's see. yeah, there you go. Sweet, I can show you that. It gives my school a six. So is that considered a great school? Well, no, because it's only a six. So the problem is, would I then go and live in this neighborhood that is going to these schools if I looked at the greatschools.org and it only said a six? No, because I want to be in the great schools. But here's the problem. How are the great schools, uh, how do we judge what a great school is? And I'm going to read you verbatim from, the, from my book, which is right off this website. And, it's, it's actually, it's very uh, enlightening to say the least. The foundation of the grade school's rating reflects how well students do on standardized tests compared to other students in the state. And ratings in most states are based exclusively on test scores. While test results give parents a good sense of how well students are performing at a given school, it only provides a limited snapshot of the school's overall quality. So, you know, kudos to greatschools.org for saying that, that the test scores in and of itself isn't enough. But this number right here is based solely on the test scores that these kids take. I mean, test scores, folks. Now, this is high school, but we're talking about test scores in kids in elementary and then kids in middle school. I have a kid with dyslexia. He does not take tests very well. His IQ is through the roof. His test taking skills, and many of you might be uh, familiar with this, leave something to be desired. He just needs more time. He needs different kind of mentoring to figure out how to manage around the test. But he'll do fine. He reads like a champ. But the issue is when it comes to specifics on tests, he, he doesn't fare as well as other children because that's not his skill set. Does that give any uh, competence level to his test taking ability or even the teachers that teach him though? No, it's dumb. But yet, can you blame a parent right here and point at myself for saying, yikes, I'm not sure I want to send my children to a great school, which only rates 6 out of 10. And the reason being is because when I have to sell my house, how is a new buyer going to look at this school and buy it when it's only 6 out of 10? So if I have to pay a premium for a school district that is in a great school rating of 10, let's just say, I'm willing to do that because I think I can turn around if I need to sell my house to somebody else who wants to pay a premium to keep their kid in a great school district. But here's a dilemma. What if you buy into a 10, a school rate of 10, and it drops to six? What happens then? So you pay the price for that school district up here, but now the school ratings, for whatever reason, fell to a six. You think you're going to be able to command the same price as what you paid for it? No, I don't think so. Because everybody else is worried just like you. The great school district means something. The, the great school ratings mean something. Well, I just told you what it meant. It meant it was based solely on test scores. So let me give you another example. This is, again, for high school. Let's back up to middle school. Let's back up to elementary school. Now you got kids in third and fourth grade taking standardized tests. 
And that's how we're going to evaluate the great school? Is third and fourth grade children taking standardized tests? <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. And now here's what I've learned in our experience. We've been uh, to public schools in Virginia, Texas, New Jersey, and Georgia. A little stint in a private school here in Georgia as well. Everything is contingent on the principal, folks. You have a great principal, you're going to have a great school. I'm telling you right now, the great principal is a great school. There's just no other way to judge a school because I, as much as I, I can see why people look at grade school ratings and use that as a, a judging way to start, I, it's just not enough. The problem though is how are you going to get to know the principal? Now, when we lived in New Jersey, how are we going to know the principal at a school, local school district here in North Fulton County? It's tough, if not impossible. Because let's say we see a 10 for a great school, we call down there and the principal doesn't talk to us. Let's say the principal is busy. I mean, what, what do you do? You look for another school in a different county where it's get a 10, you try to contact that principal. It's tough to evaluate a school when you're out of state. That's just a fact. And so this is where greatschools.org and other websites, ranking websites, do provide a service, at least it gives you a starting point. But it's got to be more when you're looking at schools. And, and I just encourage you as you're going, th if you are going through this, as we have done many times, to look beyond the great school ratings. And certainly, certainly, certainly be very careful of paying a premium for a house that's in a highly rated great school because that great school is based on test scores. You get a new group of kids in there. I, you know, you get a change of the, uh, of the school districting or whatever. You might not have the same test scores that you did before. You know, then you've paid a premium for a school that no longer des deserves a premium because it's no longer a great school. It's now down to six or five or heaven forbid a two because, you know, you can't send your kid to a two, right? Well, why? Well, because it's not a great school. Why? Because the kids don't do well in test scores. And again, I don't fault anyone for thinking like this. I mean, I've, trust me, man. All the schools we've been to, we always looked at greatschools.org. That's just all there is to it because it's a risk to look at a school that's not considered great. But there's a different correlator to that. And again, you just have to know it's test scores that drive this. And some children don't take tests as well as others. Some children don't care about the test. I know when I was in school, man, I could care less. I just want to go outside and play. So I just caution you before you spend a lot of money to get your kids and to pay a premium to get your kids in the great school. Just remember what it is you're buying and then what happens. And the great question that all financial planners ask, what if? What if the great school is not so great anymore because the test rating, test taking skills of the children drops? What happens then? What happens then if you have to sell your house and now you're in a school district that's rated a six, but you bought when the school district was rated a 10, but you got to sell your house because you got to take a job as we talked about in the first series of this video series in a different state, but you can't get the price that you paid because other buyers don't want to pay the premium for a school that's only a six when you bought it, it was a 10. <sighs> a lot of what ifs in there, folks. Anyway, what's your experience on this? Have you ever looked beyond the great school's rating? Have, what have you found? I'd love to hear what your experience is when you've gone through looking for schools. How did you do it? I mean, again, it's more to just looking at the website, but you can't just fly to Texas when you're living in Virginia to go investigate the schools for five weeks. You just don't have the time. So what's your experience been? Share in the comments below. I guarantee there are other people going through the same thing. and I'd love to hear what you went through and any suggestions that you have on how to evaluate a school district would be wonderful. Again, always hit subscribe. I know I get say this all the time, that red button, subscribe. And then hit the notification bell. The notification bell will give you updates on the content that I produce via email. And then every time you log into YouTube, you'll see a notification bell that's, that's in red that says there are new notifications on there, i.e. new content has been published. Hey, I always look forward to your comments, guys, and look forward to seeing you on the next, next episode of the Heritage Wealth Planning YouTube channel. Thanks, guys.